Hey folks, Nick Mock 7 here again today, and as I've been saying uh, all along, thanks again to my new subscribers. Um, I've now passed the 300 mark, so to do a few quick calculations for you, um, that's roughly 0.00009% of the entire U.S. population, or 0.00004% of the entire world. Uh, now, I'm trying not to let that power go to my head, but... I did find a sweet deal on a scepter on eBay this weekend, so uh, look for that in an upcoming video. Uh, enough of that nonsense, though. Um, really, thanks to all the folks who tune in, and especially to those who've been posting comments, asking questions, hitting the like button. Um, I really appreciate that. Now, my tank is looking super overgrown, but no worries. I'll be attacking that with a weed whacker uh, after I finish this video. But don't worry, I, I will be using a GFI outlet. So. Uh, today is the last part of the series on electrical safety for the aquarium. Um, we're going to focus on some basic safety issues that I probably should have started with, um, but then we'll spend a little bit more time looking at grounding probes and try to answer the question of whether we should be using these in our tanks. Okay, let's start with the simple things. Um, these are things that I think we sometimes all forget, um, and the theme here is going to be an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and I'll give a shout out to the first person uh, to post in the comments where that question, uh, where that quote came from. All right, so when we're working in our tanks, the simplest thing to do is just turn off the power. Um, the best thing you can do is if you're using a surge protector, uh, just hit that switch that kills power to everything. This is by far the easiest and safest, safest thing we can do. Now, check your equipment during routine maintenance as well. Uh, look at your heaters, your air pumps, your lights, your power cords, anything else for damage, fraying, or anything concerning, and go ahead and replace that right away. Uh, another thing we should be doing is using drip loops. This is easy to do. Just make sure the lowest point of the electrical cord is below the outlet. Um, and I'll post a picture if that doesn't make sense. But literally what will happen is if uh, water drips down that cord, it'll flow away from the outlet. Um, easy. Uh, another thing to do is uh, insulate yourself. Make sure you're wearing rubber boots, a tinfoil hat. Okay, don't do that. Uh, just stand on a rubber mat and or wear you know rubber-soled shoes. Uh, sorry, ladies, I don't think high-heeled shoes are going to work here, but I could be wrong. Uh, and of course, grab a towel. Keep yourself, whenever possible, dry. But of course, we're going to have our arms in the tank sometimes. Uh, though at least keep your work area dry because, of course, water does conduct electricity and is slippery. Okay, now most of us know to do those things if we don't always actually do them, but I think grounding probes are a more interesting piece of equipment, and I don't think many folks are actually using these, but again, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that. Uh, now, there are some good arguments for and against these devices. So, uh, that's what I'm going to focus on today. <clears throat> now, first, what is a grounding probe? Well, that's the easy part. It's a, typically made out of titanium. It's a rod that you put in your tank, it's attached to a wire that you then plug into your outlet. Now, only the ground portion of the outlet, that center uh, ground uh, hole in the outlet, uh, there's no connection between the hot or neutral wires. So there's no electricity actually flowing from your outlet. Now, the theory goes that if there is stray voltage uh, leaking from some electrical device into the tank, the grounding probe gives it an exit path, which keeps you and your fish safe. Now, you can actually test for stray voltage, um, but of course your equipment can malfunction at any time, so testing only gives you a snapshot. But that being said, if you have a voltage meter, uh, which I think everybody, every homeowner at least should, or you know, perhaps you can borrow one from a friend, turn the selector to 120 volts uh, AC, uh, and I'll try to insert some footage here of, uh, of my, um, uh, my uh, meter, and show you how you would do it, or at least what settings to use. Uh, so once you've got that uh, selector turned to 120 uh, AC voltage, insert the black probe into the grounding hole in an electrical outlet, and then put the red probe into your aquarium. Now, if the needle or the digital display uh, shows numbers or moves, then you have a voltage leak that needs to be addressed immediately. In fact, you may want to consider making this testing part of your routine maintenance. Next, if you do find a stray voltage, because of course if you don't, you're done, disconnect each device one at a time, retesting the voltage each time you unplug something until you've singled out 
what is causing the voltage leak or vice versa. You can unplug everything and plug everything in one at a time. Uh, honestly, start with your heaters um, and then your power heads, uh, your pumps. Those are going to be the things that are most likely to be leaking stray voltage. Okay. Now, if you have a grounding probe in your tank, this is a temporary fix for these kinds of situations. It just alleviates the symptoms. Um, it does not fix the cause, of course. But even so, it still sounds logical that having a grounding probe is a good backup in case you don't immediately notice that stray voltage is leaking into your tank. All right, well, hold your horses there. There actually are too many scenarios to go over in this video without it getting absurdly long, but these include hot line leaking into water, uh, short circuit between hot and neutral, again, in the water. Um, and these scenarios, again, actually can vary depending on whether the equipment, like a heater, is inside your tank or the equipment is outside of your tank, like your lights. And there are dangers of each scenario, and they vary depending on whether you have a GFCI outlet uh, and whether you have a GFCI outlet with or without a grounding probe. So what I'm actually going to do, rather than try to hit, it turns out there can be about you know 12 or 15 scenarios, I'm going to put a link, I'll try to put that right here, and in the description of the video below, to a really fantastic discussion on this issue that you can look at in depth. So please go and read this if you have a minute. I think it's really well worth your read. Uh, but let me summarize since I know not everyone is going to go and read this. The very safest thing you can do for yourself, your family, is use a GFCI with a grounding probe and an AFCI breaker, which is an arc fault circuit interrupter. Now, explaining AFCIs is beyond the scope of this video, but suffice to say, they replace regular circuit breakers in your panel and can detect arc faults. Um, these are the primary causes of electrical fires in, in, in homes. But for your tank inhabitants, the safest thing is actually just to use a GFCI with an AFCI and forget the grounding probe. But both of those are relatively safe. Now, the most dangerous thing you can do is to not have a GFCI at all. But if you watch part two in this series, you already know that. And knowing is half the battle. Remember, to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video today. Dislike it if you didn't like the video. And be sure to subscribe for more. Next video is more likely to be a tank update since I haven't done one, in the, one of those in a while. So, see you next time. Cool.